bread and wine to Heinze. Round us the town is at rest. The street in pale lamplight falls quiet and their torches ablaze. Coaches rush through and away. People go home to rest, replete with the day and its pleasures, there to weigh up in their heads pensive, the gain and the loss, finding the balance good. Stripped bare now of grapes and of flowers as of their handmade goods, quiet the market stalls lie. The faint music of strings comes drifting from gardens. It could be someone in love who plays there. It could be a man all alone thinking of distant friends, the days of his youth. And the fountains, ever welling and new, plash amid balm-breathing beds. Church bells ring. Every stroke hangs still in the quivering half-light, and the watchman calls out, mindful no less of the hour. Now a breeze rises too and ruffles the crest of the coppice, look. And in secret, our globe's shadowy image, the moon slowly is rising too. At night, the fantastical comes now full of stars and, I think, little concerned about us. Night, the astonishing there, the stranger to all that is human over the mountain tops, mournful and gleaming, draws on. Marvelous is her favor, nights, the exalted, but no one knows what it is or whence comes all she does and bestows. So she works on the world and works on our souls, ever hoping. Not even wise men can tell what is her purpose. For so God the highest has willed to very much love you, and therefore dearer even the night, reasoning day is to you. Nonetheless, there are times when clear eyes, too, love the shadows, tasting sleep uncompelled, trying the pleasure it gives. Or a loyal man, too, will gaze into night and enjoy it, yes. And rightly to her, garlands we dedicate, hymns, since to all those astray, the mad and the dead, she is sacred, yet herself remains firm, always, her spirit most free. But to us, in her turn, so that in the wavering moment, deep in the dark, there shall be something at least that endures. Holy drunkenness she must grant, and frenzied oblivion grant the onrushing word, sleepless as lovers are too, and a wine cup more full, a life more intense and more daring. Holy remembrance too, keeping us wakeful at night. And in vain we conceal our hearts deep within us, in vain, we, master and novice alike, still keep our courage in check. For who now would stop us? Who would forbid us rejoicing? Day long, night long, we are urged on by a fire that's divine, urged to be gone. Let us go then, off to see open spaces where we may seek what is ours, distant, remote though it be. One thing is sure even now, at noon, or just before midnight, whether it's early or late, always a measure exists, common to all, though his own to each one is also allotted. Each of us makes for the place, reaches the place that he can. Well then, may jubilant madness laugh at those who deride it, when in hallowed night poets are seized by its power. Off to the isthmus then to land where wide open the sea roars near Parnassus and snow glistens on Delphian rocks, off to Olympian regions, up to the heights of Cithiron, up to the pine trees there, up to the grapes from which rush Thebe down there and is Minos loud in the country of Cadmus. Thence has come and back there points the god who is to come. Happy land of the Greeks, you house of them all, of the heavenly, so it is true what we heard then in the days of our youth. Festive hall, whose floor is ocean, whose tables are mountains, truly in time out of mind, built for a purpose unique. But the thrones, where are they? Where are the temples, the vessels? Where to delight the gods brimful with nectar the song? Where then do they shine? Where the oracles winged for far targets? 
Delphi's asleep. And where now is great fate to be heard? Where is the swift and full of joy omnipresent? Where does it flash upon dazzled eyes, thundering fall from clear skies? Father, ether, one cried, and tongue after tongue took it up then thousands. No man could bear life so intense on his own. Shared, such wealth gives delight. And later, when bartered with strangers, turns to rapture. The word gathers new strength when asleep. Father, clear light. And long resounding it travels, the ancient sign handed down and far striking, creating rings out. So did the heavenly enter, shaking the deepest foundation. Only so from the gloom down to mankind comes their day. Unperceived at first they come, and only the children surge towards them. Too bright, dazzling, this joy enters in so that men are afraid. The demigod hardly can tell yet who they are and name those who approach him with gifts. Yet their courage is great. His heart soon is full of their gladness, and he hardly knows what's to be done with such wealth, busily runs and wastes it, almost regarding as sacred trash, which his blessing hand foolishly, kindly has touched. This while they can the heavenly bear with. But then they appear in truth, in person. And now men grow accustomed to joy. And today, the sight of Godhead revealed in their faces. One and all, long ago, once and for all, they were named. Who with free self-content had deeply suffused silent bosoms. From the first and alone satisfied every desire. Such is man. When the wealth is there, and no less than a god in person tends him with gifts, blind he remains, unaware. First, he must suffer. But now he names his most treasured possession. Now for it words like flowers leaping alive he must find. Now in earnest he means to honor the gods who have blessed him. Now in truth and in deed all must re-echo their praise. Nothing must see the light but what to those high ones is pleasing. Idle and bungled work never for ether was fit. So, to be worthy and stand unashamed in the heavenly presence, nations rise up, and soon, gloriously ordered, compete one with the other in building beautiful temples and cities. Noble and firm, they tower high above river and sea. Only, where are they? Where thrive those famed ones, the festival's garlands? Athens is withered and Thebes. Now do no weapons ring out in Olympia, nor now those chariots all golden in games there, and no longer are wreaths hung on Corinthian ships? But why are they silent too, the theaters, ancient and hollow? Why not now does the dance celebrate, consecrate joy? Why no more does a god imprint on the brow of a mortal struck as by lightning the mark, brand him as once he would do. Else he would come himself, assuming a shape that was human, and consoling the guests crowned and concluded the feast. But, my friend, we have come too late. Though the gods are living, over our heads they live, up in a different world. Endlessly there they act, and such is their kind wish to spare us. Little they seem to care whether we live or do not. For not always a frail or delicate vessel can hold them. Only at times can our kind bear the full impact of gods. Ever after our life is dream about them. But frenzy, wandering helps like sleep. Night and distress make us strong. Till in that cradle of steel heroes enough have been fostered. Hearts in strength can match heavenly strength as before. Thundering then they come. But meanwhile, too often I think it's better to sleep than to be friendless as we are, alone, always waiting. And what to do or to say in the meantime, I don't know. And who wants poets at all in mean years? But they are, you say, like those holy ones, priests of the wine god who in holy night roamed from one place to the next. 
For when some time ago now, to us it seemed ages, uprose all those by whom life had been brightened, made glad, and the Father had turned his face from the sight of us mortals, and all over the earth rightly they started to mourn. Lastly, the genius had come, dispensing heavenly comfort. He who proclaimed the day's end once more would come, the heavenly choir left a few presents behind, gifts in which now as ever humanly men might take pleasure since for spiritual joy great things had now grown too great here among men, and even now there's a lack of those strong for joy's extremity. The silence sometimes do live on. Bread is a fruit of earth, yet touched by the blessing of sunlight. From the thundering God issues the gladness of wine. Therefore, in tasting them, we think of the heavenly who once were here and shall come again, come when their advent is due. Therefore also the poets in serious hymns to the wine god never idly devised to sound that most ancient one's praise. Yes, and rightly they say he reconciles day with our night time, leads the stars of the sky upward and down without end, always glad like the living boughs of the evergreen pine tree which he loves, and the wreath wound out of ivy for choice since it lasts and conveys the trace of the gods now departed down to the godless below, into the midst of their gloom. What of the children of God was foretold in the songs of the ancients? Look, we are it ourselves, fruit of Hesperia it is. Strictly it has come true, fulfilled as in men by a marvel, that those who have seen it believe. Much, however, occurs. Nothing succeeds we are heartless, mere shadows until our father ether made known, recognized, fathers us all. Meanwhile, though, to us shadows comes the son of the highest, comes the Syrian, and down into our gloom bears his torch. Blissful, the wise men see it, in souls that were captive there gleams a smile, and their eyes shall yet thaw in response to the light. Dreams more gentle and sleep in the arms of earth flow the Titan. Even that envious one, Cerberus, shrinks and lies down. <laughs>